I've been fixated on hinges lately. These kind, print in place, support free hinges. And the hinge design that I've used for almost all of them is actually really simple. It's easy to wrap your head around and it's easy to implement. Now, some of these designs have been fairly complex like this thing, but the hinge that makes this work is the same as in all of the other things. Even, even this slide back box with its complex sliding articulated lid is really just a multitude of individual print in place hinges that uses this same design. So now obviously there are other complexities that go into making a design like this work as print in place, but that basic fundamental mechanism is the same. Now, I had a write-up of this hinge design for my Patreon supporters, but it was very Fusion 360 oriented. And one of my backers asked, could you do the same in Tinkercad? And here we are. So what I'm going to do is a really rough make it up as I go design of, I think it's going to be a box, we'll find out, in Tinkercad that uses this style of hinge just to demonstrate how easy it is to implement and how easy it is to make this kind of thing. and apply it to any given design. So whatever we end up with will be pretty rough, but I'll print it and we'll see where we go. So over to Tinkercad. Now we're going to start by creating the basis of the hinge, which is just going to be a cylinder. Now I'm going to start by setting this to maximum sides just because I like to do that and let's shrink this down so that it is five millimeters in all dimensions that's an arbitrary size you can go smaller I've used three millimeter hinges just fine um, with this approach that is so the first thing we're going to do is create that cylinder and then that's going to be in that orientation and it's going to be the top of our hinge now that's not going to print straight on the bed so we're going to make the bottom part of it just a, a cube. So we've created a cube that's five millimeters on a side and we're going to stick the cylinder on top of it. So let's just move that into place using the usual alignment tools and I've set the grid snap to 0.5 millimeters just because that way everything meshes up with the two and a half millimeters that is the radius of that. So okay we group that and that is the basis of the hinge. Now this is the part that's going to be in contact with the part next to it. This will, this will make sense in a, in a second. So basically we're going to take this truncated cone and we're going to stick it sideways on to the part that we just made. Now you'll notice that I'm changing the dimensions so the angle of that cone is 45 degrees because that's going to print really easily. So again use our orientation tools. Now we actually want two of these cones. We want one on the front and one on the back because one is going to stick out and one is going to serve as an indent for the adjacent hinge piece to stick into. So create two of those, looks good. Now obviously the one that's going to be the indent needs to be turned into a hole and then we can just grip the whole lot and lo and behold we have the basic component of our hinge. It's that simple. So all we're going to do now is duplicate it. Now Tolerance comes into play here. I generally use 0.5 millimeters between elements that I want to move freely and that's what I've used here. So just doing control D there. Looks good. Okay, that's our hinge. It's literally as simple as that. Now obviously we want some things to join onto it as well. So let's just create a nice slab about you know, I'm having second thoughts about this. There's probably an easier way. Okay, let's just grab the all of those cubes from the bottom of this stack. So I'm just going to duplicate all that and then let's ungroup so we can delete all of those top bits. And this is just a convenience so that we don't have to resize all the bits individually. Do -do 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 -do. Ungroup, ungroup. 
I'll just hum some hold music here while this happens. Okay, so that just leaves us with those cubes. So let's just grab the alternating ones because obviously we want alternating ones to be joined to different sides. So let's just move them into place. And I should mention, I'm making this up as I go along here. I've kind of got a vague idea in mind, but the idea is just to show how this hinge design hangs together. And I'm doing that in a fairly rough way. So if this seems a bit um, off the cuff, that's because it is. Okay, so let's make those say three millimeters thick. Three millimeters is pretty robust, I find, for, for box components. But, you know, I, I have a certain aesthetic that I like. I certainly know people who use very thin walls and do beautiful designs, but I, li I like my things to be thick and robust and yeah. So let's do that. Another three millimeter one here. Okay, so these aren't actually joined to each other yet. So we're going to need to extend some of these things out. So let's, let's, oh, actually, yeah, let's just delete the end of the, um, the sticky outy bit because there's no hinge for it to join into. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate that and drag it out. And I'm using a trackpad here, so I keep scrolling the wrong way for the zoom in case you're wondering why I keep going in and out like that. Okay, let's extend that to the full length. So you, whoops, wrong way again. So you get the idea here that we're just building a slab that's going to join into those alternating hinge pieces. Ah, uh, that's better. Okay, so I've just switched to orthographic projection. So instead of using perspective, so now I can see properly when things are lining up. Okay, let's drag that out. How big do we want this thing to be? Actually, it's probably easier if I just type this. Now this is this is arbitrary, and I haven't really decided what this box is going to look like yet. But bear in mind, this is all print in place, so there are some complexities to that as well. So we can't just put a box on its side and expect that to print because we'll have some massive overhangs and we don't want support in any of this. Okay, looking good. Oop, except let's just fix up that sizing. There we go. So there is one thing that is a bit tricky to do in Tinkercad, and that is to rotate around an arbitrary axis. So we're going to have to find a workaround for that because we want to be able to rotate that, let's call it a lid, uh, around that original cylinder that we made. So what I'm doing there is just grabbing a copy of that cylinder, and I might make it just a little bit bigger than the original one, but notice that I'm doing a uniform resize, which is keeping that central axis in the same spot, and that is critical. So let's just make that really large. Okay. All right, and it might actually just make that whole, just so I can see what's going on. But that, that, that cylinder that I've just made there will not form part of the final product. And it's not necessary to do this for the hinge design itself. It's just going to let me rotate that piece around that axis through a bit of hackery. So first let's just adjust those slabs. See, the other thing is that I've made that uh, new cylinder 0 0.5 millimeters on each side larger than the, the hinge. So this will let me see the, the range of where those hinge pieces are going to move with an allowance for tolerance. So I can tell just by looking at this stuff whether or not anything is going to collide with anything it shouldn't. Now, that's more of a concern with more sophisticated designs, and this is really simple, so it's not really something we need to deal with. Uh, it's more of a concern if we had that pivot point down within the slabs themselves, but since it's raised, nothing is going to hit anything else. So, let's just 
for convenience, group the two sides. So we have two distinct parts that are intertwined. So we have the two parts that form each half of the hinge. So let's just grab that. Donk, donk, donk. And group. All good. And now we just grab, actually we can grab everything and just unselect the thing we just created. Group all that. There we go. So that's our hinge so far. So looks cool. We could print that and that would, that would work. It would be a hinged thing that doesn't require support. But we want more. We want this to be a box. So how are we going to do that? I think we could make this a triangular prism box. But first, we're going to need to rotate that lid part. The red part we'll call the lid. So now for my technique for working around rotating around an axis. So I'm just going to duplicate this lid because we're going to save one in place for uh, convenience because that's where it needs to be when we print it. But see I've just duplicated and made it a hole, grouped it with that central green cylinder and then hidden the original. Now see that central green cylinder now has the lid chopped out of it and when we rotate because the cylinder is still circular around that plane we're going to get rotation around that central axis so now when we ungroup the lid has been rotated around that central axis so we can get rid of that we'll hide it in case we need it again and the lid can be made whole once more so that's that's a convenient way well that's the way that i take as an approach to rotating things around an axis in Tinkercad, just because that's something that's really out of the sphere of the basic Tinkercad controls. But it's all doable. All right, so let's add some walls in. And this is where I'm just making things up as I go. So let's put, put a wall up against the side of the, let's call it the base, the orange bit. Looks good, do some alignment. We're going to have to do some resizing. Let's see, so let's just drag that out. At some point we're going to want to chop these walls so that we get a triangular prism of some kind. So let's work out how we're going to do that. So let's drag that in, that'll do. Again, this isn't supposed to be a work of art here. This is just supposed to be a, uh, a technical exercise, if you like. So let's, let's duplicate that wall on the other side because that's easy and gives me a moment to think about what we're going to do next. All right. Da -da -da. There we go. Now we have two walls. Now, the reason we're doing a triangular prism is just to avoid having a, uh, a roof slab, if you like. So let's just duplicate that and rotate it out. And that can serve we can serve as our back wall, but we're going to have to angle that as well. So, well, we, the, the alternative would be that we could just extend that lid, but it's probably simpler if we do it this way. So, and, and again, it's just, I'm making this up as I go along. Okay, so, put that in place. And, oops, I didn't center that. Better center that. Dun, dun, dun. And there we go. Okay, that's better. Now we're going to need to angle that as well. So let's rotate. Okay, that'll do. Better shuffle that in a bit as well. Precision operation, as you can see. Okay, let's just make these things transparent though, so we can see what's going on. So the T shortcut key is fantastic for that. I mean, you can go into the color settings anyway, but T for toggling transparency on and off is, it is, is very useful as a, as a quick way of doing it. Okay, so let's just shuffle that back a bit. Now we're going to need to chop that entire back off. Now, how could we do that easily, I wonder? What if we duplicate that angled wall we just put in there 
and this is where we're completely outside the topic of how we build build hinges and we're just into how can we make this vaguely look like the box we want it to be and so there's probably simpler ways of doing this but what i'm going to do is move this slab out and then uniformly scale it now the reason that i'm doing that uniformly is that that will maintain that angle consistently so that angle is the thing that i want to be uh, consistent with so we're just trimming that back wall and just drag it out until we overlap everything looks good and let's just group all that stuff and we should have a triangular prism box oh we better make that a, a hole first though but that looks pretty reasonable okay and group look at that it's like magic so our lid on the front is still a separate object. Now we're going to have to trim those overlap bits as well. I, I hope if this inspires you to make something, I hope you take a little more care than I am here. <laughs> All right, it's probably easiest if we just use the lid object itself. Uh, actually, that's, that's not a healthy way of doing it. Uh, what if we just grab that? Actually, we can just subtract the lid object because that'll intersect with everything anyway. It'll mean that the lid overlaps at the top, of course, but I can live with that. So group all that. Because don't forget, we've got the actual lid still lying flat horizontally, just hidden. Okay, so we need to remove those. Let's just go back to basics and use a cube. Mm -hmm. Angle. Yeah. So one of the one of the tricks with any print in place design is how do you orient what you're making so that you can reliably print all of your walls and all of your, your whatever the components are of your design. So let's just pop that over. And if we just group all of that... Oh, look, I've got a an indent on the end there. I'll have to fix that in a second. Actually, yeah, let's do that. So if we do a mass ungrouping... Yep, it's just that one. I mean, we could leave it there, but it seems silly. Let's just drill down and remove it. So fortunately, we're in a position where we can just ungroup all of the uh, the things underneath. Looks fine. Let's just hide all that stuff to get it out of the way. Though, of course, when we reveal it again, we're going to get the both the that central axis object and the, the lid itself are going to pop up as well. Okay, so now that's sorted. And, oh, look, there's all of our other, other stuff. So let's just group everything except those two. And we should have our box body in place. There we go. Let's hide that again. And I think we might be done. Are we done? Let's choose a tasteful color for that. Let's detransparentize it. Look at that. It's ready to print. And there it is. Works straight off the printer. No support needed. And it's great. It's such an easy design. It's such an easy approach to use. Uh, it, it works anytime you've got a horizontal hinging component like that. This is pretty applicable. You can get a bit of an angle on it and it'll work, but not a vertical hinge. That requires a different consideration. But yeah, I love this design. It's so useful and it frees you up to think about the bigger questions about your design. So if this has inspired you to do hinge designs, I'd love to see them. Tag me on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm ClockSpring3D on there. Uh, you can find lots of my other designs on my mini factory and I'm ClockSpring3D there as well. And I'm also ClockSpring3D on Patreon. So I hope that's been useful and informative and that you've enjoyed watching. Thanks very much.